Anton and Laura, that was beautiful. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, and thank all of you for remembering to set your clocks ahead. <laughs> we may have people coming in at 11.30 this morning. Oh, so we're very delighted to have you here this morning. Our wonderful musicians are Anton and Laura from Mount Shasta. Thank you so much for twice a month making the trip down. Our um, wonderful Ken Ficklin, our associate minister, is going to be platform this morning along with Al Boren, who is back with us. Welcome back, Al. Our prayer chaplain is Twyla Cooley. Sound is Kathy Black. And our usher is Jerry Reutman. So we are just filled with volunteers serving this morning. Thank all of you so much, and thank you for coming to receive. Let us begin our morning together with prayer. So if you'll just take a deep breath and settle down. Taking a minute to become aware of your body. If there's pain or discomfort in your body, just breathing into that. And resting. Knowing that all is temporary. And that at the highest level, all is well. As we are together this morning, celebrating generosity we feel grateful for the abundance in our lives. Whether we feel abundant in our pocketbook, whether we feel abundant in the home we live in or not, when we go out into town and see the glorious trees in bloom, when we see the daffodils and tulips and iris coming up, how can we help but feel God's love and abundance right here and right now. So with great gratitude for each of you who have come this morning, who have remembered that time is temporary and it changes, and that last night our time changed, and that we are right where we are to be at exactly the right time. 
So thank you with gratitude in my heart, Holy Spirit, into each of you. And so it is. All right, we're going to share a welcoming song now. And if you'd like to stand up, if you're able or willing or desire to, and remember that we can dance even if we're not singing loudly. We are all across the room. We can smile, we can namaste, we can wave, we can air hug. <laughs> All righty then, on this wonderful uh, spring ahead day, let us uh, begin this portion of our service with our first principle, unity's first principle. And let's say this together. Together, there is only one presence and one power active as the universe and as my life, God the good. And now for our daily word, and I would like to have Al come forward and share that with us. Thank you, thank you. Golly, it's good to be back. See all you happy, wonderful, beautiful people. My God, what do you have in front of your face? Oh my God. It's stunning. Don't ever take it off. But hey, it is good to be back and uh, thank God for vaccine and the science and all. Uh, hopefully, we're all on the path to free and whatever normal does look like. Uh, so it's, it's good to be here. Uh, our focus today from the Daily Word is energy. And the affirmation is the energy of divine life renews me. Can you join me with that? The energy of divine life renews me. How do I have the focus to achieve my goals? How do I have the strength to carry on through challenging times? How do I have aptitude to learn, grow, and change when I'm called upon to do new things? At the heart of everything I am called to do is the energy to do it. I am a divine being, and I call upon the power of God within me to channel my energy in deliberate ways. Divine energy is inexhaustible. Unlike my muscles, which can tire, and my mind, which can feel frazzled, I think I'll repeat that, my mind, which can feel frazzled, the power of God within flows through me unimpeded. In prayer, I claim divine energy 
and imagine it flowing through me with the force of a mighty waterfall. I am grateful for my renewal. The scripture is taken from Isaiah 40, verses uh, 30, 31. Even you and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Thank you, Al. And now we're going to go into our uh, affirmations for the month of March. And the first one is our affirmation for inner peace. And let's say this together. I release all to God. My spirit is peaceful and free for guidance. I open my mind to divine inspiration and follow my divine direction. For healing, every atom of my being is invigorated with healing life. For prosperity, I am prospered by divine love. For world peace, I am an emissary of peace and harmony in the world. And so it is. And now for our vision statement, let's say it together. As a vibrant, sacred community, we express the indwelling Christ spirit and co-create a world that works for all. And now for our UCIR consciousness statement. Divine order is now manifesting in every phase of this ministry through its expanding prosperity, attendance, and by being a light on the path for others. And now we get to hear some more wonderful joy singing. A song by Karen Drucker. song in an upbeat way you know you sort of meditative usually when we sing it I love that thank you so Laura now that you've just sat down would you please stand up again and light our Christ candle for us we light this candle to remind us that the light of Christ lives within each one of us. I am the light of Christ. And now let us give our community blessing. We love you. We bless you. 
we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. And for all of you who are joining us from afar, we behold the Christ in you, too. And now together, our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is everywhere present, wholeness is your name. Your kingdom is come, your will is being done, in earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day and every day our daily bread, and you forgive us as we forgive. You leave us not in temptation, for you deliver us from error. For you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now will you join me in our meditation for the morning. And as we move into the silence, know with me that God is everywhere present. Know that God is within the smallest atom and the tallest sequoia tree, but most especially God dwells within each and every one present. And as we move into the silence, let our hearts be open. Let us feel that love of God, that love who we are, each and every one. And as we enter into the two minutes of silence, Take in with you the thoughts of your loved ones, friends, people you do not even know. Think of our government. Know that it is being ruled by love, knowing that everything is perfect and in divine order. And as you go into meditation, think on these words. There is only one life and that life is God. That, love is that life is power, love, beauty, and all the attributes of God. And that life is my life now. And that life is your life now.
And now may we move into the time where we send blessings. Blessing to all our friends, blessing to those that we don't know. Take a few moments and then speak the names out loud. Those that you ask the special blessing for today. And now may we speak our own name out into the universe, knowing that we are so blessed and we are so grateful for all that God has given us. Carolyn. And so it is. We're going to be doing an original song that we wrote in a moment. <laughs> Technical concerns. That you wrote. <laughs> it's okay. Of my 
Thank you. Isn't it wonderful to have the talent where you write your own music and you perform it? It's just beautiful. Thank you. And thank you, Ken, for getting my stool. You know, it really is funny having this stool because I finally get an idea of what it might be like to be six inches taller. And it's very different. <laughs> I see the world differently. So, this morning we are going to be talking about Zacchaeus. And we are going to start with me singing a song for you. So... You probably, some of you know this song, if you ever went to Sunday school when you were little. And if you do, sing along. And if you don't, just follow the hand motions because you'll get them really easily. So, here we go. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to see what he could see. And when the Lord came passing by, he looked up in that tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, because I'm coming to your house today. I'm coming to your house today. So there you have it. That's the story of Zacchaeus right there. I could just step down now. But there is a little bit more. And we learn a few more of the details of Zacchaeus in his life from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. It's the only gospel that tells the story. And one of the things that we know about Luke is that Luke wrote about Jesus for all people. It was his belief that the Messiah came for all the people. And so there are probably some stories in Luke that are to make the point. And Zacchaeus was a young, we, uh, we don't know how young he was. He was little. He was a small man. And so it could be that Luke wrote this story just so that even small people like some of us are know that we too have Jesus in our hearts. Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector in the city of Jericho. And in those days, tax collectors were hated. They were despised because they were unethical and they were thieves. And Zacchaeus really betrayed his clansmen, the, the Jews, because the Romans were occupying um, Israel at the time. And it was Zacchaeus' job, but nonetheless, he collected the taxes from the people and then gave them to the Roman government. But not only did he, he overtaxed, and he just kept the extra money for himself. He padded his own pockets at other people's expense. And he was hated. So it was pretty sad because there were no laws to, collect, uh, to um, protect the Jewish people. And so tax collectors, especially powerful ones like Zacchaeus, just continued to do what they did. But Zacchaeus had within him a higher truth. That was the truth of generosity. We also have that truth in us. And Zacchaeus had just not had that higher truth tapped into yet. So he was living from his personal, more selfish nature at the expense of others. Now, we saw or we heard in the song that when Jesus came walking by, he looked up and he saw Zacchaeus. It is not said in the story that Zacchaeus knew Jesus before that time, but we can assume that he did because Zacchaeus knew enough that he wanted to be able to see this prophet as he came through the streets of Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. So we, he left a little bit early, and he climbed up into the tree. 
and he could see Jesus as Jesus came passing by. And sure enough, Jesus came by, and he stood under that sycamore tree, and he looked up and listened to what he said. He said, thank you, Kay. <laughs> when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. There we have it. Can you imagine the surprise that Zacchaeus must have felt when Jesus knew his name? Can you imagine the disdain that happened, saying, why would Jesus ask this man, a sinner, somebody who's missed the mark, to be invited to his house? Can't you just imagine people who thought they were good and were sure that Jesus would be there for them? And what did he do? He asked this little tax collector. You can just imagine the grumbling, the jealousy. We have no idea what the conversation between Zacchaeus and Jesus was. But what we do know is that by the end of the visit, Zacchaeus had said that he would give half his possessions to the poor and that he would pay back fourfold to all of those people that he had stolen from. He had had a change of heart. When he told Jesus what he was going to do, Jesus used these words in reply. Today, salvation has come to this house. Now, in unity, we say that to be saved or that salvation means to have a change of mind. It means to choose again, to turn around. And that is exactly what happened with Zacchaeus, wasn't it? He heard whatever he heard, and his heart was touched. And he knew that he wanted to shift who he was into the higher being, that higher self that rested within him the whole time. Now, this is a really good story. It's a heartening story. It tells us that evil can be turned into good. But what else does it tell us about our life today? What does it say that we might take as a nugget and say, oh, yeah, that, I could do that too? Have you ever in your life, even in a teeny tiny way, done something for your benefit that was at the expense of somebody else? I have. I don't know how many times, but one time I remember for certain. When I was a girl and a young adult, I used to make most of my clothes. And I had made a skirt, and it had lovely buttons on it, really interesting kind of buttons. Kay knows the story. <laughs> it came time to give the skirt away. And the church that I went to at the time, it was a big church. And they had thrift sales, and so I looked at this skirt, and I certainly didn't want the skirt anymore, but I sure did want those buttons. And so before I gave it away, I took the buttons off. Well, the next <laughs> Sunday at church, the minister, and it was quite a, a fundamental church, the minister at the time talked about people who would give things away, but they would alter them first. I was sure that minister was looking right at me. I was sure that he knew that I had taken the buttons off of that skirt. And I will tell you, I never altered a piece of clothing again before I gave it away. So I was not generous. I wanted something that I was thought was lovely and beautiful, and I wanted it for myself at somebody else's expense just like Zacchaeus did. And isn't it great when these stories just tap into exactly who we are too, those things that we do. And then we get this, oh, yes, I've done that too. Maybe you have been a person who has given very generously outwardly. 
but inside you've been resentful when you've given. Maybe you've thought it was, oh, I just don't, yeah, I'm going to give, but, or I don't quite have enough time, but I'm a really good person, and so I'm going to give of my time. Well, we know when we collect our offering that we have up on our screen, Jesus loves a cheerful giver, or God loves, I think it is, a cheerful giver. Have you ever known anybody that has given but not been a cheerful giver? Somebody who on the outer wants to appear as if they were, are generous, as if they have a pure heart, but when in reality they are somewhat resentful. I know if I give from an unpure place that I don't feel happy and joyful inside. I have this sort of yucky feeling. My inner God does not feel joyful. And so if I'm going to give from an unjoyful place, I might as well not give at all because there is no real gift in it. I can't imagine that as Zacchaeus collected these mammoth amounts of taxes that he's, he gave them to the Roman government, he felt joyful or that he felt good. Just like us, unless we can give fully and wholly, our heart is not at peace. It's not filled with joy. Have you ever had an interaction with somebody who at the end of the interaction, there was a little aha experience, and you did something from a pure heart or something that was a behavior change. I was talking to somebody just last week, and she said to me, you know, you said something to me. You probably don't even remember saying it, but it struck with me. I had been holding for more than a decade an incident that I had done on the death of the mother in this particular family. And she said, I didn't feel like things had been done fairly. I thought that maybe I got more than I should have. And she said, for all this time, I'd been holding on to that. And so she approached the person, got a lot of courage up. She said, for 10 years, I'd been thinking, you know, I really ought to do this, but the time was never right. We know about that, don't we? The name is never quite right. But she garnered her courage, and she approached this other person, and she said, this is what I did. She said, I don't think the other person even remembered it. But she said, I felt so much better afterwards because I had cleared myself. And isn't that the point? Oftentimes, when we have a clearing with somebody, Really, it's nice if they accept it, but that's not the point. My heart becomes more pure. And that is what the word Zacchaeus means. In our metaphysical Bible dictionary, the name Zacchaeus means a cleansing or a purity of heart. And when we take an action joyfully, when we give generously, when we feel joy in what we're doing, we come from a purer heart, don't we? <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we can be very <coughs> Excuse me. We can be very thankful for this tiny man, this man of small stature, who was greedy and who didn't always do the right thing. <clears throat> and then who had a change of heart. He turned himself around. And we can do the same thing. It doesn't matter a message from another light in the world, whether we get it from a story, whether we hear it on a Sunday. In stories, they often go far, far more than their literal meaning. There is usually something much deeper. We can get an insight from a story. Perhaps we grow spiritually. Perhaps we do something that has changed our mind, has changed our behavior. Thank you so much, Laura. And when we do, we become a greater light in the world. And if we do like Zacchaeus did, we change our mind and we begin giving 
often and frequently from a generous heart. We have changed greed into generosity. I hope you enjoyed Zacchaeus. It was really fun thinking about him this morning. And have a beautiful week. Have a joyful week. Know that you are generous givers at your very, very heart. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. It was quite moving. <laughs> you like the song, right? <laughs> uh, that was moving, too. You know, now is that time that we get to practice our feeling of prosperity. That we know that we give in many ways. We give of our time, we give of our talents, and we give of ourselves. So now is the opportunity to give of our prosperity. And we know that we give with an open and full heart. So even if you're at home, let's open up your wallet or purse and let's take out your offering and let's hold it and let's bless it together. Together, divine love through me. Bless and all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Well, after months, I'm coming out of the shadow <laughs> to be on camera. It's St. Patrick's Day on Thursday, and we're going to do an Irish tune for you. <laughs> out of the shadows more often. <laughs> Thanks, Anton. It's wonderful. Now is time for our, oh, is blessing our offering. But I don't like to be this much taller than you. <laughs> this feels more equal. <laughs> so we are so grateful for the tithes and offerings that have been given this morning with a joyful, generous heart. We are grateful for people who give of their time and of their talents. Unity Church in Reading is blessed with so much, and our hearts are always filled with gratitude as we say thank you to each of you and thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. You're welcome. Now it's time for our announcements. This week, the church will be open from Tuesdays through Thursdays from 10 until 4. And on Tuesday afternoon, we are going to be having our board meeting at 3 o'clock. 
um, we'll be choosing new board members and inducting our new board that we will be choosing this afternoon at our annual meeting. We do offer prayer both before and after service on Sundays and this morning to the chaplain, and she'll just be back in this area, and if you'd like prayer, she'll be right there waiting for you. We do have noon meditation that meets from noon to 1220, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. That is also available by the phone call-in number that is in your e-blast or your e-news. The groups that will be meeting this week are Double Winners, which is AA Al-Anon, and it meets from Sundays uh, on Sundays at 6 p.m. A Course in Miracles meets on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock. And our newest group, Young People in Recovery, meets at 6 p.m. evenings. After the service today is our annual membership meeting, and I really encourage you to stay. This is your time not only to learn what's happened through at our church through all of this year that was closed down, where you may think that not very much happened, and you will be amazed at everything that we were able to do. The class, My Grandmother's Hands, begins on March 17th and ends on May 5th. This is a class that will be focusing on racial justice. There are some spaces available, so if you're interested in taking the class, please see me after service today. Um, there, I had a dream the other night, and in my dream, <laughs> you're going to laugh, you're going to say this is so off the wall, but in this dream, I dreamed that I invited any of you who wanted to to be in a choir. And I said, especially if you don't think you have a good voice, please join the choir. And then I woke up. <laughs> so what I am saying is if you like to make a joyful noise, if you like to just sing, come and talk to me and let's create a little choir. We'll practice together, we'll have fun, we'll play, and who knows, maybe on a Sunday morning, we can join Anton and Laura or Nancy and have a little music. So I'd love to do that. And, and if you don't think you can carry a tune, especially come. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Um, this really great thing happened. Uh, my husband texted me this morning with this whole thing, this newspaper article, that we are well featured in the record Searchlight, which, is, which did apparently a very long article on what's to become of churches now that we're opening again. And I got a call from, um, I think his name is Mike Chapman. He's a reporter, and he called this week, and he wanted to talk to me. And so we had this wonderful conversation and, um, you know, when you just have a conversation with somebody, you don't know quite how they're going to hear what you've said and will they say the right things. He did a great job. So I'm going to hang this on the bulletin board because it gives Unity Church in Reading some nice space. Yes, I think so too. And finally, if you choose to stay for the meeting, and even if you don't choose to stay, out on the social hall table, we have power bars. So you don't have to go hungry between now and the time that you go home. The meeting will probably be a bit over an hour, maybe an hour and a half at the most. So please stay if you're inclined, if you would like to hear what we've been doing. And truly, it is a time for your input. And as we move ahead, we are going to begin to want to do some things in a different way, and we'd love to have your ideas. So join us, be willing to speak out, and we will just have a nice time together. So thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for joining us from afar, and let us stand for our peace song. <laughs> Yeah.
each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Have a beautiful, beautiful week, and we look forward to seeing you at our meeting this afternoon and again next Sunday. Ken will be our speaker next Sunday, and he will be speaking on a very little known character whose name is only said three times in the whole Bible, a wee little man. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. Thank you so much.